This is a Thor News presentation. Thor News presents. Either they don't know, they don't show, or they don't care about what's going on in the celestial neighborhood. Did you know red giants are everywhere? I'm sorry. Red dwarfs are everywhere. Red dwarf stars surround us. Red dwarf stars have us surrounded. Are they friend or are they foe? We begin this celestial mystery with a cloak and dagger swagger. And this adventure starts January 1st, 1600. Planet slash planetoid slash dwarf planet slash scattered Kuiper Belt object slash Kuiper Belt object slash unknown. Sedna is just coming around the corner. And as you can see by Pluto's orbit, Sedna's orbit is legendary. So in this video, I'm just asking, hey, what are the chances Sedna is a red dwarf star? Now, I think we should talk a little bit about red dwarf stars because brown dwarfs get all the press. When they talk about Nibiru, Herculubus, Tachi, people are always like, brown giant. Tip to hear the destroyer was red, red Kachina, things of that nature. And NASA and professional science have been kind enough to show us that red dwarf stars are everywhere. Now, the first time Sedna was spotted, I believe, was in 2003. It was 90 astronomical units out when they saw it. By their modern professional calculations of size, distance, brightness, they say it's pretty small. My question is, if it's so small, how did you see it? 90 astronomical units out. And... What do you think it is that makes it one of the reddest objects in our known solar system? Sedna is the missing link to a whole lot of shit. This subject is for both pure science enthusiasts and total temple hack kooky crazy right in a beer room in their underwear taps. Because it's got real science and it's got real information that can help back up your false science. Because <laughs> I don't believe in the beer room. Anywho, this ties in with my favorite planet X. And remember, Planet X is anything that's kind of a planet found after Pluto. Right now, my number one Planet X is Sedna. Sedna is a total and complete absolute badass. So much so, it's got a 12,000-year orbit. You can fit like 25 of our solar systems in it. It's orbit. And it's the reddest thing in the universe. Sounds like a red giant. I mean, red dwarf star to me. Or maybe it's a red dwarf gas giant. Who knows? Science and I are working together. Much to their chagrin, I'm filling out a better picture of the main se main star sequencing. Sweet. Excellent. It's raining here, y'all. Makes me romantic and lonely at the same time. And red giants have been in almost every story. And scientists have pretty much come out and say, yeah, they're everywhere, dude. And I like to put stuff in between the lines for the smarter people to figure out. So I don't get accused of a bunch of shit or people don't get mad. And so I have been showing this footage, thanks to Amy Mainzer. And the WISE team at NASA's Jet Propulsion Laboratory. This mock-up of uh, our Starfield neighborhood. The stars around us. Red giants, brown giants, blue giants, silver super giants, green galactic super dwarfs, mega dwarfs, whatever. Tzios! And if you look at it, man, red stars are everywhere. And I have never seen a chart that said so much with so few words as this one. In all my time of doing Thor news, this was the game changer. Look, so man, if you want to believe in Herculubus, do the Herculubus, Herculubus, do the, do the, do the Herculubus, 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 do the, do the, do the Herculubus, techno. Okay, Herculubus, Herculubus, today is crazy. Do the Herculubus, do, do, do the Herculubus. You want to do the Herculubus? Yes, you want to do the Herculubus. And if somehow Herculubus is real, comes by and kills a bunch of people, I want to apologize ahead of time for making a jokey song about it. Sweet! Nibiru. It sounded like Nibiru because A came about in like the late 90s. Another gift from the... I won't say. Anyway, misinformation. Controlled opposition. Just a stupid thing. Spread as rapidly as the name of the beast for that one asteroid. Anyway. So. You know, they talk about like the blue kachina, red kachina. It's a red giant. Red dwarf. They call them giants if they're not near us. They call them dwarves if they're near us. That's cute. You're so cute, Sans. You're so cute. So I'm saying, yeah, if you see a red giant, give me a call. Ask her if she's single. Okay. Red giants. Ready break. Sedna. And Sedna's so badass, it even just got a brand new dancing partner. From like another 10,000 light years away. They're, they're both like, hey, I'll meet you here, dude. And they're like, okay. They're a cool duo. 
Goodness gracious, great balls of fire. My favorite candidate for Planet X. Planetoid, dwarf planet, second son, Sedna. Now, first of all, let me express my opinion that to search for Planet X is healthy. Now, technically, they found Planet X back in the day. It's called Eris. I did a whole video on it. I'll leave a link in case you'd like to watch it. They announced it as the 10th planet for a while, and then instead decided to demote Pluto instead of having 18 planetoids. Long story. So second of all, you know, if any idiot is out there like, man, all you Planet Xers are stupid people. You're just crazy creepos. Well, and they are not able to critical think. All Planet X represents is an unknown planet in our solar system. And if you think there aren't any unknown planet that come in and out of our solar system regularly, then you and I share totally different ways of thinking. Like I can already tell you, they found a lot of planet X's, man. They found Sedna, Hanume, Make Make. Make Make Me a Drink. That's one of my favorite Thor News jokes. And there's plenty out there. But my favorite is Sedna. Found by Mike Brown, and it's why. He's my favorite modern astronomer. He's the one who found most of these badass planets in our solar system. Sedna has a 12,000 year orbit. You know how much of a badass you have to be? You have a 12,000 year orbit? You have to be like super badass, man. You gotta clear everything in your orbit. Now the good news is, this is pretty doom free. Because Sedna doesn't get to perihelion for like 50 more years. And its perihelion is only 76 astronomical units away. If you look into Sedna or all the mysteries of our solar system, binary star, Sedna is always there. Sedna is one of the key mysteries known to us. And that's what fascinates me. Sedna is named after the goddess of the sea and marine animals. The mother or mistress of the sea. I don't know, which would you rather have, mother or mistress? Like Forrest Gump? A little of both? They say it's a lot like Neptune, where it's a mix of water, methane, ices, and tholin. And they say it's not that big. And here's a deal, interesting Herculubian fans. It's one of the reddest objects known to mankind. That's kind of neat, right? Red is always a symbol of happy. It is one of the most distant objects known in our solar system, not counting long period and hyperbolic comets. And many people have speculated on how it got its orbit. It has been declared the first known member of the inner OR cloud. Now, some people have said that it was tugged into its orbit by a passing star or it was within Earth's birth cluster. But man, they seem to use that tugged into orbit by passing star for everything. And so like with Comet Ison, they were like, yeah, it was probably dislodged by a passing star. It's like, yeah, well, which star was passing by, man? Why can't you ever tell me which this hitchhiking star was? I'd like to know. I like to know dumb shit like that. Crap, did I say shit on Christmas? I'm in trouble. And now I'm just riffing on Red Giants. Somewhere. Over the rainbow, come, warm 